You now have to be 21 years old to buy whipped cream in New York. A man paddled 40 miles down a river in a hollowed out pumpkin. And OnlyFans' hottest new rising stars are prisoners. These are the weird stories for Tuesday on Weird AF News. The only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian inside a closet. I'm Jonesy. Thank you for joining me today. It is now illegal for anyone under 21 to buy whipped cream in New York. Why can't the kids buy the whipped cream? I have a feeling it's because they're using it to get high. But let's learn a little bit about this. Maybe we have a new way of getting high we didn't know about, guys. And it's right at your grocery store. So easy. (laughs) Now, I know the reason. Do you know the reason? That it is now illegal for New Yorkers under age 21 to purchase a can of whipped cream? This is a recently passed state law. The law, which went into effect recently, is meant to prevent teenagers from using whipped cream canisters in order to inhale nitrous oxide. Do you guys know about nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas? Uh, From my understanding, dentists used to give this out rather liberally in the dentist's office, which makes me wish I was going to the dentist's office much more back in 1958. Uh, Okay, so nitrous oxide being inhaled from a whipped cream canister is known as whippets. You hit them whippets when your problems come along. Hit them whippets. (laughs) You guys know about whippets? Used to do these, of course. It's like uh, senior year in high school. (laughs) Hanging out in a McDonald's parking lot, doing whippets in the back seat with girls named Brittany and Morgan. It was a good time back then. We all had insurance. It's nice when you have health insurance. You can wake up with anyone. You can wake up anywhere. You're covered. Now, the legislation for this particular state law specifically names whipped cream chargers which are small steel cartridges of nitrous oxide used in whipped cream dispensers. Okay, so they're not exactly banning the cans of whipped cream you get in the grocery store. They're banning the more professional cartridges that you would use if you were like a professional baker or something, I believe, right? Or in a kitchen, like a professional chef. Um, I've had those. We called them crackers, the small steel cartridges of of nitrous oxide because you just crack them and... uh, (laughs) Am I sharing too much here about my past drug experimentation back in old Boston, Mass? Stores in Albany, New York have begun IDing shoppers looking to purchase canned whipped cream as well. Oh, okay. So the canned whipped cream is included. (laughs) They're covering all the bases here. They don't want the kids getting a little brain dead. You know, but it's okay to prescribe them all of these antidepressants and ADHD medications that also make them brain dead. But no, I can't. Can't take a whip it, though. This is a health crisis. <laughs> but give them all the pills in the world. It's, that's okay. <laughs> are you, are you all right, lawmakers? Now, we have the uh, DEA making a statement, and you know they know everything about what's going on in the drug culture, so you know what they say is going to be pretty rational. Uh, approximately one in five young people have used inhalants, such as whippets, by the time they reach eighth grade. Abusing inhalants can, quote, cause damage to the parts of the brain that control thinking, moving, vision, and hearing. Um, yeah, alcohol does this as well. I don't know if you're aware of that, DEA, but uh, we're just a, <laughs> a nation that just runs on alcohol, it seems. Uh, I'm just trying to point out the inconsistencies with the Drug Enforcement Agency and their Uh, their policies, and their point of view. I think they're about two decades behind, usually. New York State Senator Joseph Abadabo of Queens said that he sponsored the law after receiving complaints of empty canisters littering the streets. Is that all it took? Wow. I didn't know that's all it took. It's uh, So it came from litter, basically. Went from litter to a drug law. (laughs) Fascinating. Uh, Here's a quote from Abadabo. The need to limit the access and sale of whippets first became apparent after receiving constituent complaints about empty canisters on neighborhood streets. Used whippets piling up in our communities are not only an eyesore, but also addictive of a significant nitrous oxide abuse problem. Yeah, people are abusing everything, Abadabo. I don't know if you're aware. This is how it is now. It's a hard world to live in, guys. 
That's why you need nitrous oxide and weird AF news so you can laugh. You can laugh. <laughs> In fact, that's the best way to listen to weird AF news. Take a whip it and listen to weird AF news, but only if you're over 21, guys, okay? I don't condone teenagers using what's called inhalants. Not at all. This is a very serious, abusive situation that we have on our hands here. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Weird AF news in Jonesy only condones the children inhaling that clean, crisp oxygen air that is, um, well, if you can find it anywhere, it's, um, we're living in a rather polluted world these days. So I'd imagine at some point we're going to be bottling this crisp oxygen that we get from, like, I don't know, Maine and Canada, perhaps. A man tries to break the giant pumpkin down the river record. A man in Nebraska is going for a big orange world record. He's hoping that the Guinness World Records organization will certify his recent trip down the Missouri River. He trekked 38 miles down the Missouri River in a hollowed-out pumpkin. This is the longest such trip ever in a hollowed-out pumpkin. Yeah, he just grabbed a paddle and paddled 38 miles in the pumpkin on Saturday. This was to celebrate his 60th birthday. Wow, pretty cool. This guy's awesome, man. I hope I'm doing crap like this on my 60th birthday. Instead, I'll probably just be sitting in a chair battling acid reflux. Or uh, maybe I'll just incorporate the acid reflux into some sort of record. Like, what's the longest bike ride while having acid reflux? Maybe I can attempt that on my 60th birthday. (laughs) Okay, so Dwayne set out from the city of Bellevue at about 7.30 in the morning and arrived in Nebraska City 11 hours later. How did that pumpkin hold up, man? Um, The makeshift pumpkin vessel had the name SS Berta written on the back and a cup holder carved into the hull. He carved a cup holder in there. Well, yeah, you needed some iced coffee to fuel you down the river. Or Guinness, whatever you're into. It is, you know, after all, the Guinness World Record he's trying to accomplish here. The previous Guinness World Record for longest journey by a pumpkin boat was 25 and a half miles. (laughs) Can you imagine that's an actual record? (laughs) <laughs> the longest journey in a in a boat. Oh, it's probably thousands of miles. What about a pumpkin boat? No, only 25. Okay, I'll try that one. I wonder what the record is for the longest journey by pumpkin boat with no clothes on. You could actually probably tackle a lot of the Guinness World Records naked and just start a whole new category. Yeah, but I did it naked. And there's like a whole new book and a whole new organization, the Naked World Record Organization. A spokesperson for the Guinness World Records company said that they have gotten Hansen's application for the title and are waiting, awaiting evidence to review this. Oh, does this guy, Dwayne, have the evidence? Dwayne, did you take video of this? Do you have to take video, just a clip in the beginning and then at the end as proof? Or do they want you to record the whole damn thing? It's 11 hours. I don't know if your phone's going to last that long when you're recording that video. I have a lot of questions about how you qualify for a world record, according to Guinness. But hopefully this guy will be able to do it, this guy Dwayne. Now, his pumpkin was pretty big. It weighed 846 pounds. The pumpkin was named Berta, hence SS Berta. Doesn't say where he got the pumpkin. Does this guy guy also grow giant pumpkins? What's the going rate for an 846-pound pumpkin? Let's figure this out. All right, I found it. It says here the average price per pound for pumpkins, according to United States Department of Agriculture Statistics, is a dollar thirty-eight. That means that his vessel costs like a thousand bucks. Wow, this guy was really committed. Well, big shout out to Dwayne for trying to do something weird in this world. I always commend people when they try to do something weird. The OnlyFans hottest new rising stars are actually prisoners. <laughs> prisoners on OnlyFans. Who would have thought? Are they naked? Let's find out. More than a year into the pandemic, OnlyFans was created. Um, a lot of people have an OnlyFans. Maybe your friends, your coworkers, your adult children. Might, maybe your wife. You know, Maybe ask her if she's got an OnlyFans. And if she does, is she sharing the money? Is she sharing the proceeds? There's a good chance these people... And any given person that you interact with on a daily basis might have an OnlyFans account, guys. And now even prisoners in Mexico are cashing in on this trend from behind bars. OnlyFans from behind bars. An OnlyFans page allegedly run by inmates of a Mexican prison is going viral. (laughs) This is amazing. 
The page consists of fairly graphic content filmed behind bars with phone cameras, which, while not technically allowed in a prison, are apparently common within Latin American prisons. The OnlyFans page reportedly features multiple videos of various sexual acts, my goodness, including group sex and masturbation, as well as a collection of explicit photos depicting the alleged inmates showing off their tattooed bodies and their private parts. Wow, it's pretty scandalous. Well, you know, you're a prisoner, imagine, you're probably pretty bored. You're already having group sex anyways in the shower, you might as well film it and make some money off it if you can. Uh, I bet these prisoners are making more money than I am with their prison only fans account it says the creators behind this account are actually profiting off their content yeah of course and if the alleged inmates are indeed inmates this would seem to mark the first time that prisoners have made any money from behind bars uploading explicit content online yeah, how does the prison not know that this is happening <laughs> the prison is unaware nobody has sent the owner of the prison a little email hey man you might want to take a look at this this is what's going on in your prison. Cell phones and debauchery. As you can imagine, this prison OnlyFans account has attracted some fans, mostly male from around the world, with various commenters praising the content and requesting more of this content, requesting some violent prison sex. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think you can arrest all those people that are following this account. I think they're probably up to no good. The alleged inmates behind this account were rumored to be keeping their content mill running behind bars by bribing the guards to look the other way. The actual prison that this content is based in is rumored to be Puebla's San Miguel prison, which has a very rich history of corruption. The article ends by congratulating the inmates on their groundbreaking foray into internet porn, once again solidifying OnlyFans' reputation as the biggest shift to happen in the porn world since the internet itself. Yeah, but if you're OnlyFans, the company, I don't know if you want this going on. You might have to take a look. I don't know if this is okay. I mean, I'd imagine the sex in prison, eh, some of it is non-consensual. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. And probably some of that has been caught on video in this OnlyFans account. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm just guessing. You know, they did stop Airbnb from offering those slave quarters on their website. I assume OnlyFans will crack down on this as well, but who knows? And lastly, I'll just say that this story should motivate you to not let anything hold you back from becoming an influencer. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Yay! Hi. I want to thank you for listening to this entire episode of Weird AF News. I appreciate it very much. I know there's a gazillion podcasts out there, so you spent some time with mine, and I just want you to know that I really appreciate your time. I'm going to keep this outro brief for you. If you guys would like to call the show, the number is 646-450-2012. You can email me articles at funnyjones at gmail.com. Follow me on the Instagram at funnyjones if you want to see where I'm performing stand-up comedy. If you have any interest in that, if you'd like to support the show, you could tell a friend or someone that you're sharing a prison cell with. Just tell them about Weird AF News. Apparently, phones are getting into prisons. That means Weird AF News might be getting into prisons. Pretty cool. So tell your fellow prisoners, listen to Weird AF News during lunch <laughs> or out in the yard. Is that what you call it? All right. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show by, by keeping Jonesy caffeinated, you want to keep me caffeinated? Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash weirdafnews, or download the Patreon app, do a search for Weird AF News, and you can do that there. If you join the Patreon, you also get extra Weird AF content that I curate myself. Yeah, I pick out this stuff. Some of it's too weird to actually make the podcast. Imagine how weird that is. So join the Patreon. You can also go to weirdafnews.com and do all kinds of crazy stuff, you kids. Okay, enjoy yourself. Hi, Jonesy. This is Mel, your Hoosier Traveler. Um, I just wanted to give you a few comments on um, a couple news stories you've been having. Um, first off, the the uh, Japanese 
Domino's delivery guy. Um, first off, that is awesome. I love it. Um, so actually, Domino's is really popular in Japan because they have amazing pizza. Basically, every two pieces has something different on it from seafood, uh, so shrimp and a bunch of crazy stuff, to hot dogs. Um, so they are really popular there. Um, also, uh, you had me cracking up with the Domino's in Italy. That story, uh, yes, the Italian men are so aggressive. I was laughing out loud. You are hilarious. Um, and also, Domino's is really popular in Jamaica. Uh, so I wanted to pass that on. Um, they, they were really good there. So um, just a few little tidbits uh, from a fellow traveler. Keep up the good work. I listen to you every morning, and you have me cracking up every morning. Thank you for the good work. Bye-bye. Hi, Gen Z. It's Connie from Cedartown, Georgia. And I'm calling about the, I can't remember which episode it was now, but you mentioned um, seatbelts in the car and that you don't wear yours some of the time. And it was because you're seatbelt ribs your neck my beef with the seatbelts is and it doesn't matter which car I'm in mine or somebody else's I think all cars most people refer to their cars as she or her I think cars are men because they always the seatbelt always grabs my boobs it never fails and that is so annoying (laughs) and my car identifies as a male. I named it Bringer of Rain. One, because Josh Donaldson's one of my favorite players. And two, because every time I wash it, within 36 hours, it rains. I watch the Weather Channel. I watch the local news. I mean, if you want it to rain, just tell me to wash my car. It'll happen. But... um. Anyway, I was just going to tell you that about the seatbelts because my car is definitely a guy. It grabs my boobs every time. So anyway, I hope you had a good Monday, and all of you weirdos out there had a good Monday too, and have a great rest of the week. Love y'all. Have a good life, man. Bye.